What's going on everybody? Hope you're all well. Obviously we've got UFC 279 going down in just a few hours from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, as you know, all hell broke loose this week. What an absolute shit show. Uh, but the UFC do it once again. Managed to figure it out. Managed to fix it all. Managed to give us some very, 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 <laughs> very compelling matchups. Uh, fucking hell though. But let's just go through some of the things. So... There's the press conference on Thursday. It all kicks off backstage. Obviously, Hamza and Kevin Holland, they were talking a little bit of shit about one another. Obviously, Hamza confronted him. Fighters, he's certainly in the prime, certainly when you're someone like Kevin Holland and Chimiev. The volatile things, especially when you've done a training camp. You are in fight mode. You are ready to go. You are literally ready to step into a cage and fight another human being. So tensions are boiling. You know, the testosterone is pumping through that body and they're ready to throw down. So anyway, they saw each other. That kicked off. Diaz, Diaz and the crew, they thought, fuck it, we'll get involved as well. Why not? Because they love a good old-fashioned street brawl. And yeah, it all kicked off to fuck. Uh, and then on top of that, oh my God, Chimiev doesn't make weight. Chimeyev doesn't make weight. Listen, I'm, I'm a fan of Hamza. I like what he brings to the table. I like his, his realness, for want of a better word. He doesn't give a fuck, does he? And he goes on about all oh, these gangster brother, brother, I'm the real gangster. Uh, but as Nate Diaz says, real gangsters do make weight. Unless you nick Diaz. If you nick Diaz, you show up and you want to change it from 170 to 185. Week of the fight. Just kidding, Nick. Absolute legend. But still, you know, it was worth mentioning. Uh, but still, Hamza shows up doesn't even come close to making weight. You know, if you know my stance on fighters not making weight, I have no sympathy. I don't. So I don't want to ostracize myself from Hamza Chimiev because I've hung out with him. He's a friend. He's a good dude. He's friends with Darren Till. Any friends of Darren's, they're friends of mine. But I can't change my stance just because I'm friendly with him. You know, that's unprofessional. You've only got two obligations to show up in shape and on weight. Right? That's what makes you a professional fighter. You can't guarantee you're going to win, right? But you should show up in shape, meaning the ability to go three or five rounds, and you should show up on weight. It's as simple as that. And I'm sick of people's excuses all the time. And I'm not talking about Hamza here, I'm talking about people in general. They always have excuses. As fighters, we know. We know when we step onto the scale whether or not every morning that we're going to make weight. When we get out of bed as fighters, we get out of bed, we go and have the biggest piss that we can to make ourselves as light as possible. And the first thing that we do is step on the scale to monitor our weight. And we know as the fight's getting closer and closer, as the training camp is drawing to an end, if the weight isn't coming down, you have to make tweaks. Okay, simple as that. And obviously those tweaks weren't made. Is it a reflection of the training camp? Is it a reflection of his discipline? We don't know. What we do know is that in the last fight against Gilbert Burns, he started to tire. Started to get very, very tired in round three, round two, round three, because it was the first time he was pushed. You know, most of the fights, Hamza's has gone out there and just fucking wiped the floor with everybody, okay? But in that fight, it was an absolute war. Gilbert Burns is absolutely no joke. One of the best in the world. Hits like a motherfucker. Great jiu-jitsu, strong, powerful, explosive. Could go on all day, right? Great fight. Hamza got the job done. But now, he's not even fighting Nate Diaz anymore. I mean, Nate Diaz, talk about kind of... Uh, a godsend for him. And I don't mean a godsend because now he doesn't have to fight Hamza Chimeyev. What I mean is, in terms of a PR move, for Nate Diaz, this is as good as it gets. A last-minute opponent change. He accepts the fight, so he gets all that credit there. And Diaz showed up on weight. He did his job. Now, granted, I've always said Diaz is kind of undersized at welterweight. So, of course, it doesn't surprise me that he makes weight. But he is a professional. Every single time, he's always made weight. He's always showed up on weight, in shape, ready to go. Three rounds, five rounds, doesn't matter who the opponent is. Diaz is that guy. You can always depend on him. He's always been reliable. He's always shown up and fought his fucking ass off. Regardless of whether or not he wins or loses, that's why he transcends the wins and losses. That's why people don't really care because they love the attitude. They love the authenticity. They love that real ability to fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Because a lot of people say that, but they don't really mean it. Well, Nate Diaz is all about that life. That's why he has that fan base that he does. Another one is um, Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland, last minute notice, switch up, takes him away from D-Rod. I was really looking forward to that fight. Daniel Rodriguez is a great kickboxer. Him and Kevin Holland would have been a great fight. But come on, come on. Kevin Holland versus Hamzat Chimiev. That is intriguing. And you know what? Kevin Holland was so smart. 
Kevin Holland was really smart by insisting that he will take this fight, but I want it at five rounds. Because as I said, the longer this fight goes, the balance tips into the favour of, of uh, Kevin Holland. Obviously, first few rounds, Hamza Chimeyev all day. You know, Kevin Holland has often been out-wrestled in his UFC career. If there's somebody that's going to out-wrestle him, it's going to be Hamza Chimeyev. The man's a wrestling phenomenon. But, as I said, he gets tired, he slows down. Kevin Holland is poor to fucking finish, man. And he's had some great wins. I mean, look at that uh, win he had over Jack Ray Souza. Do you know what I mean? He, he's, he fights all the time. Four fights, I believe, or five fights, actually in 2020 or was it 2021 regardless lots of fights um so yeah i mean the man's the real deal and now he's got five rounds to take down hamzat jimeyev on the feet i reckon that uh kevin holland can give him a good go he's tall he's long he's fast he doesn't give a fuck he's not scared he's coming into this one very very confident and rightly so and if he can get into well into the championship rounds into the deep waters I think Kevin Holland has a real good chance of causing an upset and giving Hamzat Chimeyev his final win. Let's talk about the main event. Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson. Couldn't be happier for everyone watching because what a fight that is. Tony Ferguson, though. I'm really happy for this guy. Tony Ferguson's been so loyal. He's been such a great fighter. He's another one that people love. They love the realness. And again, he'll fight anyone. He's a little bit out of his mind, but that's why we love him, right? And Tony Ferguson has been in nothing but absolute wars against the best fighters on the planet. Now, as we know, he's had a bit of a decline lately. He's been struggling to win, but he went up to 170. That's because... Those grueling weight cuts, they affect your ability to take a shot. Now he's fighting at 170 pounds. And now he's fighting Nate Diaz, who, to be fair, is a lightweight, much like Tony Ferguson, competing at welterweight. So this is a really intriguing fight. It's a throwback to two old school guys. It's a fan favorite matchup. Tony Ferguson and Nate Diaz is a fight that I would have loved to have seen many years ago. So now we're getting treated to that. And if this is Diaz's last fight, it's awesome to see him fighting somebody like Tony Ferguson. Obviously, in terms of jiu-jitsu, they match up really well. I think on the feet, Diaz has the longer reach, and he's probably got the crisper boxing. But Tony Ferguson, you can never count this man out. When it comes to wrestling, Ferguson's going to have the advantage there. But they're both fighters. They're both dogs. They're both not going to quit. They're both going to bleed because they've got scar tissue all over the face. There's going to be blood smeared all over that octagon, and it's going to be fucking sensational. What else we got? Let me just have a look at the cards. So Diaz and Tony Ferguson, that's crazy. Hamzat Chimeyev and Kevin Holland. Oh, and Lee Jingliang now fighting Daniel Rodriguez. Um, Li Jing Liang and, and Rodriguez, they deserve credit as well. You know, first of all, the UFC for putting this all together, making this happen, because, you know, I've got to imagine there was demands made backstage, managers get involved, they say, we'll take this fight, you know, but we might want a few more dollars or whatever. I don't know, but I assume that's what managers try and do. Uh, and, you know, the UFC, you know, they have to piece this back together. I will say this, you know, Hamzat Chimeyev is under a lot of pressure right now. He has to go out there and put on a sensational performance tonight because if he doesn't, it's going to be a long time before he finds himself in this position again. They gave him a pay-per-view main event. He caused a mass riot backstage which forced them to have to cancel the press conference. Now, granted, there's no such thing as bad press, even if there's no press conference because... You know, everyone was talking about it. It was huge news. I'm on the other side of the world and it's all I see on my feed. So that would have generated buys. But then to show up in his first main event on a pay-per-view and not make weight and have to cause all this, this, uh, this rejiggling of the card, it's not a good look, you know. So he's got to install confidence back in himself to the UFC, if that sentence even makes sense. Uh, because, you know, his stock's dropped in terms of, you know, how dependable, reliable he is. Ultimately, how professional he is. Now, fortunately for him also, he has the opportunity, though, to eradicate all of that. Okay, if he goes out there tonight and goes up against uh, Kevin Holland, new card, uh, goes up against Kevin Holland and wipes the floor with him, much like he did Lee Jing Liang, right? That was a, a masterpiece. Like he did against Joe Mirchart, 17 seconds and the other two fights. If he does that, all is forgotten. Right? 
And by the way, he's now a real life Bond villain for the UFC, you know, smiling at the Waynes, flipping off the crowd and all the rest of it. You know, the crowd didn't like him. I've looked on Twitter, there's people talking loads of shit, but do you know what? Controversy sells, you know? UFC needs a bad guy. This is combat sports. Bad guys are a great character to have and he's really leaning into the character of being a bad guy. But if he loses... Well, that's not a good look. If he only scrapes by a victory, once again, that doesn't do him any PR with the UFC. But if he goes out there and absolutely dominates, wipes the floor, gets a finish, makes it look easy, and then rocks it on the microphone, guess what? All is forgotten. UFC 279 going down tonight. I'm here in Bulgaria. I'm in my hotel room. I'll be getting up super early to watch the fights. I'll be doing instant reaction videos. Uh, so make sure you tune in. Check them out, ring the bell, subscribe, all that good stuff. But still, I'm going to go. Uh, predictions real quick. Tony Ferguson, Nate Diaz. Love Tony. I think Nate gets it done. I think Nate gets it done. Hamzat Chimmy after Kevin Holland. I think Kevin Holland gets it done later in the rounds. I do not. I think he wins by decision. I do. When you struggle to make weight and then you don't make weight, you're going to get tired. And that's already been an issue for him. And now it's five rounds. And I see uh, theories, people going around saying, oh, Hamza never even tried to make weight. My dad dropped me off at the airport in Manchester last night and he said to me, oh, he, I don't even think he tried to make weight, Sam. I'm like, dad, don't be silly. You know, that's crazy. If he didn't, that's, a, that, that's mind-blowing to me. It's mind-blowing. And I don't believe that. I think he definitely tried to make weight. There's no way he's pulling those kind of moves. Uh, so if he tried to make weight and he couldn't make weight, well then... He's going to get tired. So therefore, I'm going to lean towards Kevin Holland. Uh, what else? Lee Jing Liang. Daniel Rodriguez. Ooh, tough one to pick. Love them both. D-Rod's amazing. Lee Jing Liang's amazing. I'm going to go with D-Rod. Daniel Rodriguez gets it done. Arine Aldana beats Macy Chasson. Johnny Walker, E1 Kutalaba. Ooh, good fight. Good fight. Kutalaba. Yeah. There it is. Anyway, main card. I'm in Bulgaria. I'm going to get up at the crack of motherfucking dawn to watch it. Hope you're all well. There's a few of my thoughts for you. Take care. Enjoy the fights. And make sure you come back for my instant reactions. All the best, people. Take care.